So in this question, we are given a vector function that we're going to color red throughout the duration of this question. And then we have a plane that we will color in blue. Now we're looking for a point on that red vector function so that the tangent line, which we've drawn right here, is running parallel to the plane. Now let's take a careful look at what we've done here. We have our point P labeled and we have the tangent line running along the X axis, kind of pointing out of the computer screen, if you will. And because it is a tangent line, we're going to end up with a tangent vector, which we've called R prime of T. And here is the key. If you look carefully at that tangent vector, in order for that tangent line or tangent vector to be parallel to the blue plane, then that tangent vector is going to have to be perpendicular to the normal vector. So let's review normal vector. The normal vector is pointing upward along the z-axis in this case. It is perpendicular to the plane. And from the perspective of this drawing, we can see again that this tangent vector, if we sort of trace its tail all the way back to the tail of the normal vector right here, the only way that this tangent vector is going to be parallel to the plane is if that tangent vector is perpendicular to the normal vector. And so that becomes the key, is that r prime of t must be perpendicular or orthogonal, as they sometimes say, to that normal vector. Now, let us recall from an earlier section that when two vectors are orthogonal or perpendicular, then their dot product must equal zero. You probably learned that in an earlier section or an earlier chapter even, perhaps. But again, for two vectors to be orthogonal, then their dot product must equal zero. So what we need to do then is find this tangent vector, r prime of t, this should have a little arrow above it, and then also find the normal vector of the plane, and then we're gonna take the dot product and set it equal to zero. So let's start out with the r prime of t. Just take a look at this equation up here. This is your vector function, but we want the tangent vector function. So we need to differentiate it. We need to compute its derivative. So r prime of t is simply going to be the derivative of the components. So you can see the x component is 2 cosine of t, and the derivative of 2 cosine of t, of course, is negative 2 sine of t. And then the y component is 2 sine of t, and the derivative there is 2 cosine of t. And then finally, the z component is e to the t, and the derivative of e to the t is e to the t. So this is our vector function here. Excuse me, this is our tangent vector function because it's r prime of t. We also need the normal vector of the plane. Well, take a look at the way the plane's equation is written right here. You'll notice that we have root 3x plus y, and then essentially we have plus 0z is equal to 1. And when you learned about the equations of planes, you remember these so-called direction numbers. So for example, root three is a direction number. This coefficient of one in front of y is a direction number. And then the coefficient zero of z is also a direction number. And they sometimes label those direction numbers as a, b, and c. But importantly, we remember that the direction numbers give us the normal vector. So in other words, the normal vector of the plane is very simply those direction numbers. It's radical 3, comma 1, comma 0. So that's easy. We're going to now take the tangent vector function, r prime of t, and we're going to set up the dot product with the normal vector. So here is the setup, and now we may want to review how to do a dot product. All we need to do is multiply the x components together. So in this case, we would have negative 2 sine of t multiplied by radical 3, and then you're going to add to that the product of the y components, so 2 cosine of t multiplied by 1, which of course is just 2 cosine of t. And then to that, you add the product of the z components, so e to the t multiplied by 0 is 0. Now again, we're going to set this equal to 0, and we can solve this equation for t. And to do so, we will actually divide out the negative 2 in front of the sine of t. So we're just going to divide every term here by negative 2. We can drop this plus 0, of course, get rid of that. Divide the right side by negative 2, won't affect that side. So now we have positive, and we're just going to cancel those negative 2s out and put the radical 3 in front. So radical 3 sine of t minus 1 cosine of t is equal to 0. You could then add the cosine of t to both sides of this equation. 
So now we have radical three sine of t is equal to cosine of t. And now we will divide both sides by cosine t. Doing so will give us one on the right hand side. And then we have a little simple trig identity here. Sine t over cosine t, of course, is tangent of t. And then we have that radical three that we're going to divide both sides by. And so now we have the tangent Something glitchy just happened there with my computer. My apologies. Now we have the tangent of t is equal to 1 over radical 3. Now, let us recall the restrictions on t. It could only take on values between 0 and pi inclusively. And so we recall that that would be just quadrants 1 and 2. We have the tangent equaling a positive 1 over root 3. So that rules out quadrant 2 because tangent is negative in that quadrant. And then you might recall from reference angle studies that the correct reference angle in quadrant one for a tangent equaling one over root three is pi over six, AKA 30 degrees. So what this tells us is that we have the value for T. It's going to equal pi over six. Now, if the question just said, find the value of T, then we would be done, but it didn't. It wanted the point on the actual vector function r of t. But that's easy. We can just now take our vector function, the red one right here, and we're just going to plug in that value of t that we just figured out. There is our vector function, and here we go. We're going to plug in pi over 6 for t. And then we just clean this up. We know that the cosine of pi over 6 is radical 3, so we're going to get 2 Excuse me, it's radical 3 over 2. Oh my goodness, I just woke up a short while ago. We have the sine of pi over 6, which is 1 half, so 2 times 1 half is just 1, and then this e to the pi over 6 cannot really be simplified. 2 divided by 2 is just 1, so we have 1 radical 3, and there is the answer to the question. This is the point on the vector function whose tangent line would be running parallel to the given plane. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you're interested in making a small donation to my cause, I would greatly appreciate it. But of course, please do not feel obligated to do so.